Hey everybody, welcome to the Ant Channel video blog. And this week what I want to focus on is operational amplifiers. Now, there's a mess of things you can do with them. Like there's integration, differentiating, comparison, all this fun jazz. You can do it summoning amplifiers, uh, digital to analog converters, and all this fun stuff. I mean, the products are endless. I mean, the real life application is limitless. So it's a really cool project. But the one reason why I'm a huge fan of op amps is probably the main reason why they're used, amplification. And what that means is when you take a small signal and then you amplify it so it's extremely obvious. Um, and so it's huge and loud or, you know, a lot more voltage. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want with that voltage. So what they do is they take an electrical signal and then they amplify it to a larger electrical signal. So what that allows you to do is use it to control systems or things like that, or in my case, audio amplification, where you can take a guitar, which doesn't produce a lot of voltage on its own, and then you can amplify that signal while distorting it, make it more of a square wave to give you that crisp, harsh edge sound, and then actually make an awesome sounding guitar. So let's actually see what it can do. just an intro to what an op amp can actually do, but they're defined as a high gain DC amplifier. Now they can also be used for AC signals or anything like that, you know, square wave, triangular wave, and that will allow us to amplify those as well, but the problem is there's a catch. The higher the frequency, the less it actually gangs. On its own, I believe an op amp can do almost 200,000 uh, for a gang, so if you put one volt in, you can get 200,000 volts out assuming that you have a 200,000 volt supply and your op amp can handle that much. So we usually use it for really small signals. So if you have, you know, a one millivolt and then you can amplify it into maybe one volt, you know, something more usable. So basically an ideal op amp would actually have a really high input resistance and an ideal case would be infinite and the output resistance would be zero. And the reason why this is, is when you take the signal, you don't want to lose any of that signal. Because if you have a really low resistance, all the current and all that stuff is going to be distorted. And basically your output you want to be zero because you don't want to have any impact on the circuit that it's flowing into. So if it's an audio circuit so it goes to a speaker, you don't want it to actually take away from the full tone or full volume of the signal or distort it in any way. But in reality, we can't get infinity and we can't get zero. So what we do is we actually place real life values to it, but we make them as high and as low as we can. So the input to an actual uh, op amp is about 2 mega ohms, and the output is 75, so that allows us to do a pretty ideal situation. Now there's a wide variety of actual op amp packages, and they come in a whole range of stuff, uh, some for high currents and stuff like that, but this is the one I'll be using this week, which is just a tiny little dip package. And basically what it has is 8 pins which allow us to configure the circuit to what we want to use it for. Now pins 2 and 3 are for our inputs, and we can set them to whatever we want them to be. So, for example, pin 2 is our inverting input. So if we want to change the actual signal so that it's opposite of what it is, that allows us to do that. Where number 3 allows us to just amplify the signal as what it is. Now pins 4 and 7 are actual power supply is actually going to the op amp and there's both a positive and a negative which allows us to actually reproduce uh, AC wave signs in their actual uh, true values so in the meaning that they can actually hit negative voltages and why this is useful is if you want to produce maybe let's say an audio sound and audio sounds actually hit negative voltages and positive voltage so that would give you a really nice sound and pin number six is our output and basically between all these you can change the circuit around so that you have different gangs and stuff because you may not always want the 200,000 gang to be accessible you may want something very mild like a gang of one to have a really low impedance just going into your circuit or something like that so right now what I want to do is show you what an op amp circuit kit can actually do practically so what I've done here is constructed a non-inverting amplifier which I'll go into in my next video and basically what this is going to allow us to do is to actually control 
the voltage going into the LED so we can make it brighter or dim just depending on the signal going into it and I'll be able to show you the, both the input and the output signal of the actual amplifier by using the oscilloscope so let's get into it so I'm not going to go into any immense theory but here's the actual circuit we're using and it's a non-inverting amplifier so the circuit's actually being supplied by a 12.7 volt power supply and what that's going to be doing is powering up the op amp as well as allowing us to actually set up our input voltage which we're going to use as a basically a voltage divider using a 10 kilo ohm variable resistor so that way we have a varying input signal that can go to the op amp. So right here is a very dim LED and what that means is that our input signal is very low as well as our gain. So in our next picture here we'll actually see what happens when we increase the signal that means that the LED should get brighter. As you can see here, uh, the actual input signal is the blue line and the output is the yellow line. So as you can see, there's a huge difference in actual voltages here. So it's allowing us to take that small signal and actually use it to power up something much larger than it could actually power itself. As you can see now, the LED is a lot brighter, which means that we've actually supplied more of an input signal, thus meaning that the gain of that signal is going to amplify the actual voltage going into the LED. So what that means is we have a brighter LED. And as you can see that the voltages are extremely close and basically the amplifier has one restriction. It can only up the voltage to a certain point. Now when your power supply actually reaches its max that can provide for the circuit, it won't be able to exceed that. That's why the blue and the yellow line are so close together. Anyways guys, thanks for watching my introduction to the op amp. If you have any questions or concerns, post them in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you on them. Anyways guys, thanks again for watching. Have yourselves a great day.